Okay. I'm gonna turn the juice back on here. I see the goats is out wandering. Oh, I've already turned it on. I'm glad I didn't grab a hold of that. Uh, I put in our other tomato plants. I think I counted 45 tomato plants. Uh, I don't know how many peppers we got, but everything we like and eat usually has tomatoes in it. And we always run short on tomatoes for big batches of stuff. So, and we always have plenty of peppers left. So I've tried to change the uh, amount of uh, tomatoes versus peppers. So I watered them. Uh, I tried a hack that I seen on TikTok or YouTube, but uh, eggshells. I had a lot of eggshells from where I had some bad eggs. I went ahead and put the eggs into the hog slop and the eggshells, I'll show you here. I tried to crush them up in the jug, had it to do it over. I probably would have crushed them before put them in the jug and mixed a little bit of miracle Grow in with it in the jug and water and shook the devil out of it and then watered the tomatoes. And the ones I watered, this is the water the first batch. I have not watered them, only with water. But this batch here, uh, I watered with the eggshell water. And it seems, I, I can't tell a whole lot of difference yet. They look good, they look good and strong. So <clears throat> I cleaned out the chicken brooder also to keep from rotting on the floor out since there's nothing in the chicken brooder now, which was about an inch packed tight of uh, wood chips, wood shavings, uh, manure, probably leftover feed, and water, and it had compacted it down, as you can see. So I thought, you know, potatoes are really growing up and out of, the, out of the raised bed, and we needed to add some material back in on top, just like you would healing them up when you heal potatoes up in your garden. So I use that. Uh, might be too hot uh, we'll see see if it burns the tops up or if they flourish and do well which i rinsed them all down real good with water after i put that on there to try to wash some of that down wash it down toward the root system okay this is my old 1943 farm all h i'm gonna have to get it back down to the house get it out of the weather it'd been garage kept mostly uh, it belonged to my father-in-law and I done some work on another tractor and I wanted to buy this tractor and he said sell it to me so he priced it and I was making payments on it and I done some work for him and he's like well I'll just give you the tractor for the work so it has a lot of sentimental value and it does to my wife also but uh, so I need to get it back down to the house and uh uh, it runs and pulls good and everything, but it, uh, I don't work it. I, I keep it, try to keep it in good shape, for, like I say, for sentimental purposes. But 1943 Farm Hall H. Pretty awesome old tractors. A little dangerous on, on this kind of farm, on the hills, but uh, just history in the making right there. So yesterday I filmed a little bit, but I ran out of storage. So I had to delete this part off my last video, but I wanted to talk a little bit about my pastures and some of the work that I had done and whether it was a good idea, good investment or bad. Uh, the sowing of the grass, yeah, that was a good investment. You see my calves down there. I know y'all probably sick of seeing them, but I, that's just money in the bank right there. Plus they're beautiful. Um, anyway, back on track. So I disked the ground because it was hard and I felt that the root, everything may have been root bound. Okay. Well, as you can see here, I still got a lot of loose soil exposed, no green. Now, taking for granted that 
the cows are pasturing on it some now. You know, they're gonna keep it picked down, but this is before the cattle even got on here this year. I noticed it just wasn't doing like it should. Now in areas, it does better than others. I believe uh, a friend of mine was, well, multiple friends had told me that I should soil sample and uh, see what my ground is lacking. And, and that's what I'm gonna have to do because I have tried doing everything without the help of, of my extension office and uh, I just can't seem to get the uh, ingredients right. So uh, I, I granule fertilized this and seemed like it was slower acting but longer lasting, if that makes any sense, versus the liquid uh, fertilize that you mix with water and I, I sprayed it on the other side. Well, the spray was almost immediately, uh, it was like overnight within, within a week's time, you could tell a big difference and then it just kind of tapered off and ain't done nothing since versus the granules, which is slow acting, but seem like it releases a little all along the way. So that is, that is my take on the two. I know that I made several videos, you know, which one's better. So probably for my use, I'm gonna say the granules, which also, that being said, the liquid fertilizer was all nitrogen. Had a higher nitrogen content than the granules, but it had uh, no potash, no phosphate. So, but, uh, I, so I'm looking, trying to figure out, you know, the sun, uh, it's actually, it's hidden by clouds, but it should be right in this area. And the only thing I can notice is, is this big tall foliage. You know, it's it's just, it's surrounded it. I love the woods. I, I, I don't really want to cut no more back than I have to, but maybe these big tall foliage trees need to come down. Let a little more light in here and start pushing back against mother nature. She is slowly taking the pasture back slowly every year inches and it goes unnoticed so i need i need to push back a little bit as long as i'm gonna run cattle if i wasn't running cattle i'd probably just leave it alone you know because i like to hunt fish and that's home for a lot of animals but right now i'm farming okay something else i done earlier in the fall i just want to touch on just trying to say yeah it was worth it or no it wasn't uh that's this cable that i put up the stainless steel cable to try to act as a deflector against uh, tree limbs because i'm constantly battling tree limbs and so far i'll say this lightly because it's yet to actually be proven it's uh yet to be determined but this, this wire so far, I haven't had to repair the fence beneath it. Uh, that being said, I think that the cable is actually not as strong as I had anticipated. I think that the uh, a good blunt force to it, I think could, uh, a good blunt force to it would uh, do it in. I mean, it's it's probably stronger than the old barbed wire, the old frail barbed wire uh, beneath it. If you notice, you know, I've got old, real old, some of these posts or split rail, uh, like this one here. Somebody has split that one. It's hard to tell how old, probably split with a fro. If you look, it looks like where they have drove the fro lick by lick. But anyway, you notice a lot of this old barbed wire, why it wouldn't take nothing to, to break it. So, you know, even though there's some new there, I'm trying to protect it with this. Let's see if we can find now see, here's a spot that's sagging. So that tells me something, 
something has hit that and it's stretched or pulled loose. Something has hit there. So I want to point out this tree right here. See the leaves? See how they're shaped? And a giveaway, pull your leaf off, wad it up in your hands and smell. Smell like Fruit Loops. Wish you could smell that, it smells delicious. That there is sassafras. Uh, they used to make tea off of it. I've probably, you've probably seen the candy, sassafras flavored candy. Uh, it's similar to root beer. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, we purchased this, I think it was at Rural King, I'm not for sure. And it's a little home, a little family owned business, a little small business. And we're gonna try this out because I've been having trouble with my turkey wasting their feed. So I just grabbed an old bucket. Now what was handy about this is it come with the hose saw. I was hunting around here trying to find a hose saw earlier to try to make something that I could put feed in that the turkey wouldn't waste because they want to drag it out with their beak. Well there, they can't drag it out with their beak. So I'm gonna wash this out. It's in my old moldy bucket, but I'm gonna wash this out, put some feed in it for the turkeys. And then I'm gonna do another one for the chickens and I will video it. Okay, see how we got that ringer at the bottom? I'm gonna come up probably above this. I think this would be the bottom of the bucket. So I'm gonna come up about right there. This is an old feed bucket that we had that the handle broke out of it. Probably be thrown away or used for something else. Well, why not use it for, for this, you know? So I done put one of these in, a different bucket. So I thread this off of that. Put that in there. It's a good fit. Thread it in, to be honest. Yep. The hole's tight enough that you can actually thread that in. I'll turn my hole down. Go to the inside. Oh, sorry. I'm paying attention where my camera was pointing. Da -da. Straighten him up a little. Just like that. It's done. Wow. I'm impressed. Check it out here. Of course, they're not one to take turns, I understand. The thing of it is, is we'll feed them and get them all full, and then they can come and get some as they want. Super stoked. Okay. Awesome idea. They work really good. Probably better so for chickens than turkeys. They work good for turkeys. But you see they're still, the natural instinct is to rake it out here on the ground where they can see, which is all right. But seems that, uh, seems that, now don't pick up my fingers. Seems like a lot gets wasted that way. So I've still got to come up with something else, but they can eat what's in there. That's just leftover chick feed that I want to feed out uh, before it ruins. It is uh, uh, 
uh, chicken tractor move day. Actually, we let it sit there probably two days too long, but uh, they're in that new grass, and boy, watch them go. They're loving it. So I come up with another feeder here, and I'll fill this feeder up and try to keep them full. Man, they're putting it away, but I feel like they're growing leaps and bounds, so 